Hi, Sophia. I'm having kind of a rough hair day. Okay, we are in chapter five. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to push out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more, so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. One day as he was teaching Pharisees and teachers of the law, who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem, were sitting there, and the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralytic on a mat, and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they couldn't find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately the man stood up in front of him, look what, what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God, they were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things today. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him, and Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large number of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. They said to him, John's disciples often fast and pray, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees, but yours go on eating and drinking. Jesus answered, Can you make the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. In those days they will fast. He told them this parable. No one tears a patch from a new garment and sews it on an old one. If he does, he will have torn the new garment, and the patch from the new will not match the old. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wineskins. And no one after drinking old wine wants the new, for he says, the old is better. What stood out to you in the reading today? I think what stood out to me is the man who was a paralytic. 
That just means he was paralyzed. So his friends, I think he had really good friends, right? His friends were trying to get him to Jesus so that he could be healed. But there's such a big crowd that they can't get in through any of the doors. So they climb up on the roof because houses had flat roofs. They climb up on the roof and they like <laughs> dig a hole and let him in through the hole. And Jesus is so impressed with their faith because it's not even really the faith of the paralyzed man, right? Maybe he's asking for it. We don't know. But we know his friends are the ones doing all the work. He's so impressed at how how focused they are, how much they want to get to him, that he immediately says to him, your sins are forgiven. The guy doesn't even ask for it. He says, your sins are forgiven. And then, like, the other religious people and the teachers were like, who is this guy who says that he can forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. And Jesus says, it's harder to forgive sins than it is to heal people. Like, and, and healing people is hard, right? But he says, but it's even harder to forgive sins. But like, I can do both. And he heals the guy. So I love that story because I love his good friends who do whatever it takes to get him help. And I love that Jesus heals his heart by forgiving his sins. And he heals his body because Jesus cares about our bodies and what just is happening to us in our everyday, and he cares about our hearts and what we're thinking and feeling.